welcome to RPG Community College. Today I have a build guide for you for uh, Stormbrand Trickster. This is the build that I've been playing most recently in Path of Exile's Blight League. It's a very strong build that's taken me all the way to Uber Elder and Solo Cell Found, and it's pretty easy to gear up and a ton of fun to play. I'd like to start off by just explaining how Stormbrand works though. Stormbrand is a skill that you basically place a marker down on the ground and then whenever a monster comes in to the attachment range of the brand, it will attach to that monster and then it will start dealing damage. And in Stormbrand's case, it will deal reduced damage to enemies that are nearby as well. Shooting out a beam that functions similarly to arc, but it doesn't chain as much, it just has a similar function. You can support it with the chain skill, which I do do when I'm not fighting bosses. And I chose to be a trickster for the easy frenzy and power charge sustain, as well as the patient reaper ascendancy node, allowing us to sustain mana, energy shield, and life very very easily, as long as we're killing things, which when you're mapping or delving is pretty much all the time. You also get a lot of non-chaos damage added as chaos damage, which bumps your damage up a ton. And I was really thinking about going Assassin, and it was uh, definitely a close second. But due to being in solo cell found and not really having access to just some of the crazy gear that you can get in a trade league, I decided to uh, just go Trickster because it was much better as a defensive option and it was a lot easier to gear as a solo cell phone player. And because of the Trickster's just kind of natural defensive ability, we're able to make use of a Shimmeron Wand, which is a unique wand that's dropped from the Elder boss fight in T6 maps and above. The degen on this wand is pretty substantial, but because of Patient Reaper, we're able to mitigate it pretty effectively. Probably one of the most annoying parts of playing a Trickster though, is when your power and frenzy charges fall off, uh, you kind of have a rough time getting him back up to full when you're in a boss fight. Because you only, you only get one a second when you're channeling a skill, and that's if you have a channeling skill, which in this build we do not. Instead, I opt to use a mine setup with charge mine support to rapidly refill my frenzy and power charges, and also just to provide like, a huge increase to our damage. With high impact mine support, we can get up to a 30% chance to deal double damage, which is a huge DPS increase, as well as using Wave of Conviction for our mine skill, applying exposure, bumping that damage up even more. That's going to be the basics of the build though, so let's take a look at the skill tree. The skill tree for this build is pretty straightforward. I don't think it really needs a whole lot of explaining if you kind of just look at it. Like, we're a brand build, so we take all the brand nodes, we kind of make a pilgrimage, from the shadow start over to rune binder on the opposite end of the tree. We grab all the life nodes on the way there. We're, we are a hybrid build, so the life energy shield nodes are really good for us. And because we grab a swift killer on the trickster ascendancy, we want to pick up the power and friendly charge nodes. And we're a crit build, so I actually fill out the rest of the power charge nodes and grab the new wheel that was added in this patch that uh, increases the effectiveness and the bonuses that power charges give up there at the top of the tree. And that's pretty much it for the skill tree. And I'll quickly go over a leveling skill tree real fast. You should be able to see it right now on the screen. And basically we just point efficiently, grab health nodes, all working our way to rune binder on the opposite end of the tree. I ended up getting rune binder around, I think, uh, like level 45. Around there, like right before I killed Gatawa, I picked up rune binder, made the fight really easy. But basically just starting off, we go up through the elemental damage side of the shadow start, go through the crit, crit multi, grab the health, then I work my way down and grab the power and frenzy charge along with the health down there by the shadow starting area, and then I started working my way to the opposite end of the tree. And it's, I mean, you can kind of see like the line I took and the path I went on the tree here. This is how I leveled the build. And from here on out, you kind of just got to play it by like feel, like if you're if you're lacking damage, pick up some damage nodes. If you're not as tanky as you'd like to be, well, there's tons of life nodes that you're buying, energy shield nodes that you can pick up to get, make you a little beefier. But let's actually start talking about the, the gear that I have. And I'll talk about them in like a order of importance, starting with the most important pieces of gear, ending with the least important. And I think the most important piece of gear is probably going to be the Shimmeron, the item that I built this entire build around. 
The next would probably be our Assassin's Mark on Hit Ring. Assassin's Mark on Hit is going to do a lot for the build, increasing our crit chance, crit multiplier, and it just gives us a lot of very important stats. Next is probably going to be our Shield, giving us some life, a lot of ES, and Lightning Damage added as Chaos, which is a huge DPS increase. And with uh, Assassin's Mark and Hit Ring and my Shield, I did multi-mod them. If you're in a trade league, don't do this. The exalts that it takes to multi-mod and craft these items, you could probably just buy better versions of the items. I only did this because I'm an SSF. The next most important item would probably be the chest, just because it's a six link, and that's huge. The six link is, well, uh, amazing. And probably the last piece of gear that I'm really going to talk about is the bubonic trail boots. These are just to uh, get rid of corpses. Corpses are pretty dangerous in Path of Exile. And there's a lot of things, especially when you're delving, if they, if they explode, and they're probably one of the things that are most likely to kill you in the game. You should get rid of them. Which I also shatter corpses as well with Stormbrand, but I'll get into that a little bit later. But the rest of the pieces of gear are basically just pieces of gear with life, resistances, and energy shield. Oh, and I also get one of each of this jewel uh, somewhere in my build, just because I'm wearing the Bubonic Trail Murder Boots and you get 10% increased damage for each different type of Abyss Jewel affecting you, so just get one of each jewel, and you'll be able to do a little bit more damage. And for my skills, there's a couple things I haven't touched on here. Uh, in Stormbrand, I do use an added cold damage gem, even though I pretty much just scale lightning damage. This is because we're a crit build, and with the added cold damage gem, we'll be shattering things and removing corpses. This is pretty much what that's for. I feel like the damage in the build is significant enough to where I, I can really I can take the damage loss in order to stay safe. But if you didn't want to do this, an added lightning damage gem is going to be uh, a much superior DPS increase instead of an added cold damage gem. Beyond that though, I do use a hypothermia gem too, but that's because I also use some of the skitter bots. And the skitter bots are not only going to be shocking the enemy and giving it increased damage taken, they're also going to be slowing them as well, making hypothermia a very strong support to be using. And I usually just uh, do a gem swap with hypothermia in chain. I use chain to increase clear speed and hypothermia to increase my, my single target. I use flame dash as a movement skill, so I also use a quicksilver flask just to make things feel a little more smoother. But flame dash is also going to be proccing our arcane surge. I have an orb of storm set up as well that's linked to Blind, Onslaught, and Cooling Strike. It's just a pure utility skill. I have Summon Skitterbots reserved along with Wrath. My Castman Damage Taken setup is just a Steel Skin and an Enfeeble. And like I touched on a little earlier in the beginning of the video, I also have a Mind setup, which is going to be Wave of Conviction with High Impact Mind, Charge Minds, and Swift Assembly. With uh, Swift Assembly, you, you basically can just throw Minds and never stop. And you only have to and you very, very rarely have to detonate them. And I've also found it much more effective to just lay out 15 mines and don't detonate them. Because your skitter bots will come up and they will detonate one mine and rearm it, and that will trigger a wave of conviction to exposure. And then you just leave the 15 mines sitting there, and you'll have a 30% chance to deal double damage, and most things will pretty much just fall over. This is going to be all for the video though. I hope you enjoy the build, and try it out. I'm going to leave you with this uber elder kill. This is actually my first time killing them, so it's a little sloppy, but all things considered, I think it went pretty well. The damage was good, I just, uh, I think I could have been a little tankier, and I just kind of walked right into some things. But yeah, I hope you learned a thing or two, and if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel a ton. But that's going to be all. I wish you the best of luck in all of your endeavors, and I hope to see you again soon.